a humanitarian crisis is unfolding in the Indian state of Assam, following the government's crackdown on illegal immigration. In August 2019, 1.9 million people have declared as foreigners became stateless overnight. This is equivalent to nearly twice the number of Rohingya refugees in Bangladesh. India has 1.3 billion people. India has the second largest population of Muslims in the world. So what's going to happen to them if um, millions of them are declared stateless? Or if millions of Hindus are declared stateless if they don't have documents? Has Modi's sectarian agenda gone too far? In a five-year-long project, 55,000 officials conducted the mammoth task of examining the citizenship credentials of the people of Assam. The applicants had to prove that they came to India by 24th March 1971, the day before neighbouring Bangladesh declared independence from Pakistan. 32-year-old Anara claims that she and her family have never lived anywhere but in India. Three years ago, her husband Kadam Ali was arrested by the police and sent away to a detention centre. After an official notice from the Foreigners' Tribunal, Kadam was declared a foreigner. It's ludicrous what has happened because families have been split down the middle because of the documentation that is required. According to sources, some 400,000 children are estimated to have been excluded from the final NRC list. 12-year-old Muzamil Haq is the only member in his family excluded. Mosamil says that many of his schoolmates have been excluded as well, around five to six students in every class. The BJP being the Hindu Nationalist Party, their thinking was that the majority of people who would be left out in NRC would be Muslims. And these would be Muslim migrants who would be made stateless. And this would give an opportunity for the Hindu nationalist BJP to build up its Hindu vote, consolidate its uh, Hindu identity. That's really frightening because the kind of language that precedes a genocide as in Rwanda, uh, where they were also called insects. It is really creating a sentiment of fear and hate in the majority community. But it is now estimated that out of 1.9 million people who were left out of the final list, nearly 1.2 million were Hindus. In the midst of a raging controversy, the Citizenship Amendment Act came into force on January 10th, 2020. It provides a path to citizenship to people from six religions, but excludes Islam. It will fast-track citizenship for those religious communities that fled persecution from the three Islamic countries of Pakistan, Bangladesh and Afghanistan, and entered India before December 31st, 2014. First of all, you're saying that you will give shelter to the victims of religious persecution who have suffered as a result of partition. 
then why have you included Afghanistan? Afghanistan was never part of pre-partition India. And if you've included Afghanistan, then why not Myanmar? What about the uh, Sri Lankan Tamils? The passage of the Act comes close on the heels of Assam's NRC. So while granting citizenship to the excluded Hindus, the new law can make Muslims who were excluded potentially stateless. With no citizenship rights, technically stateless, are we seriously looking at condemning 400, 500,000 people in Assam to permanent statelessness? What are we going to do? Throw them into the into the Bay of Bengal? Bangladesh is not going to take these people back. What are you going to do with them? Kadam has not seen his ailing mother since he came here. The detention center, where he has been languishing for three years now, and without a bail amount of 3,000 US dollars, chances are that he will spend the rest of his life here. All these detention centers are going to be hell on earth, basically. Terrible conditions, food, stay, toilets, roughness inside the detention center, torture inside the detention center for people who protest lawfully. I think it's going to be like Guantanamo Bay, India's Guantanamo Bay. Congress or urban Naxalio Dwara Udai Gai Detention Center Kya Pai Sarasar Jut Hai Badi Rade Wali Hai Desko Taba Karneke Napa Girado Se Bari Padi Hai. I've been inside the detention centers. There's six in Assam. There are two other huge detention centers. The Karnataka government has building detention centers. Maharashtra had announced wherever there were BJP governments. A brand new detention center, India's largest, is currently being built in Matia, Assam. It is slated to house around 3,000 people. History should teach us that Nazi Germany did not begin with concentration camps. It began with everyday acts of discrimination. It began by calling them also termites and infiltrators who were eating up your nation. The history of this struggle is yet to be told. I'm very optimistic that this will be a turning point for India. Suffering for India, suffering for many people, but it will be a turning point.